Hello and welcome to Merlin Leadership Unplugged. The reason I wanted to create this podcast is to show everybody that leadership is accessible, achievable and something that everybody can do in their lives if they want to. In this podcast, we will focus on sharing some amazing stories from inspirational leaders both within Merlin and outside and stories that will help us all connect and relate with that journey. I hope you find this a great learning opportunity, that you enjoy listening to these stories and that you can see that anybody can be a leader if they choose to. Enjoy. Welcome to another episode of Merlin Leadership Unplugged. Today I have the great pleasure of welcoming Rob Smith um, to this podcast and this is the first time I'm meeting Rob Smith face to face but we have been communicating with one another on email, LinkedIn, I'm stalking him more than he is probably. Um, I am in awe of his leadership style, all of the things that his team say about him whether he's present or not present which is the most important, Um, all of the great things he's done on diversity, equity and inclusion in the Asia Pacific region and his general vibe and brand that he has in the business. So I'm absolutely delighted to meet him um, for the first time today. Welcome, Rob. Thank you. Nice to be here. I love it that you're back in UK ground. Yeah, we're back (laughs) uh, three weeks in now. So it's been interesting. And the weather has been not on your side. Uh, No, the the weather's been a challenge. The first week, I think it rained every day, all day, every day. so yeah, the first week was a bit bizarre and a bit different, um, but actually it's picked up. The sun's come out a few times over the weekends and got some nice time in some of the outdoor space in London, Nice, which is great. But yeah, it's, a, it's an adjustment, that's for sure. You're going through a change curve. It's a big change curve, yeah, <laughs> a rapid acceleration change curve, but obviously originally from London. Uh, it's just that not being back here living for 12 years. Wow. And it's changed so much, you know, as everywhere else has in the world, but just 12 years. And every time I came back, there was always something different. But now living back here, you have to get used to going back to the supermarket and what food to buy and where's the local dry cleaners and all the basic things in life that have been taken away from you You have to rebuild. So, yeah, it's taking its time, but we're we're starting to settle back now. Um, I have to say everything's been great. Um, The relocation company's been great and really, really helpful. And I've just come off the phone about half an hour ago. Hopefully I found somewhere to live permanently rather than serviced accommodation. So fingers crossed that all goes to plan. Um, and if not, by the time this comes out and we're still living in service accommodation, it's not gone to plan. <laughs> so hopefully it goes well. But yeah, it's, it's been exciting. Thank you. And 12 years in Australia? 12 years in Sydney. Uh, so moved out there in 2011. Uh, March 2011. Just before the Olympics? Uh, No, the Olympics was before that. So the Olympics was, I think, 2000. The London Olympics. Oh, just before, yes, exactly. So funny enough, the Olympics was announced on the 6th of July, which was actually my birthday as well. And I thought, brilliant, how exciting to have the Olympics in London and how great. And obviously there was, I think, the Queen's... One of the yeah, one of the Jubilee. Yeah. And we missed all of it. Oh, and the royal weddings we missed yeah. as well and everything that was gone on. And then came back and, you know, the, everything had changed. Um, so, yeah, we missed all of that. But, uh, yeah, moved out in 2011 and first moved out as sales and marketing director when we acquired Sydney Attractions Group, which at the time was only six attractions, mainly mm-hmm. based in Sydney, um, also included Kelly Tartans in Auckland and a small wildlife park, Hamilton Island Wildlife Park at the time. Um, and I thought it was going to be quite a small business, you know, go out for probably two years, do the rebrands to, to Sea Lives and open a Madden Two Swords um, and then come back. Um, but about a year later, we then acquired Living Leisure Australia, um, which included the attractions in Melbourne, uh, Malula Bar, the two ski fields that we ran at the time in, in Hotham and Falls Creek. So in the space of a year, we doubled in size in Australia. And I thought, oh, OK, we'll stay for an extra two years and, and then, you know, see what happens. So it got to about four or five years and... I then moved into a, a, a regional general manager role and obviously did that for another couple of years and then became divisional director for Australia New Zealand, then DD for APAC. So in the space of these 12 years, it just we just stayed and stayed and stayed. And about two years ago, we bought our first house or apartment in, in Sydney. And I thought at that point we were done. I thought we wouldn't come back. Um, and then obviously the recent opportunity came up with the, with the managing director role in, in Midway 
and and now back. But honestly, I I honestly was the point where we were done in Sydney. We love living there. It's a great place, great people. Um, so yeah, we we we're back, and then we'll see how it goes. Who is we? Because you didn't say a single sentence starting with I. You oh. said we throughout that. Well, yeah. So that's my partner, Danny. Uh, we've been together for sixteen years now. Um, um, a, a few people have probably met Danny across the business. He actually used to work in Madden Swords, London. I really want to meet Danny from yeah. what I've heard. <laughs> a lot of people really want to meet Danny and then a lot of people meet Danny and then don't necessarily want to meet him again. Hey, that's, that's part of that. Is it the of, energy? It's a lot of energy. Okay. There's a lot of energy with Danny and we balance each other off really well. Um, because I think, you know, you have to have those relationships where sometimes people are really high on energy and others aren't, and you rub off in each other. Um, and at the same time, you know, sometimes I'm really high energy as well, particularly in a work environment, you know, really passionate about what we do. And um, I think that re w w works really well together. So, yeah, Danny and I have been together for 16 years. Um, we met actually, um, he, as I say, he used to work at Manchester London. Um, he, he was one of the um, dancers and performers and, uh, and one of the actors. You know, he, he actually was an actor in the Chamber Live, as it was for a bit as well. Oh, is that uh, the, the scary bit yeah, that they do yeah. at so, so it was the, the reincarnation of Chamber of Horrors, which has obviously yeah. now been brought back at Madden Swords London. So he did that. He also has done some dance performances and various other things. But he came back for someone's leaving do. Um, um, I think it was the HR manager or the HR director at the time was leaving. And Danny came back to uh, do his, his, his show. Uh, and we met the, the day before the leaving do, and he was doing his rehearsal and went out for a drink afterwards. Didn't really think anything of it, and it just materialised and materialised. And yeah, 16 years later, we've been to Australia, we've come back to London, uh, we've got two new two dogs, uh, our little Bobby and um, and uh, Roxy, who are very much in the we, the we family and the Smith Murphy, Smith Murphy family. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's our little family, and, and that's how we met. And 16 years later, uh, still together, yeah. That, what a partnership. Yeah, it's been great. Like, I mean, funny enough, when we first moved to Australia, we had a, a really small amount of time to go. We were literally, it was two weeks. Oh, wow. Um, you know, the, 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 the MD at the time, we'd had a conversation actually almost a year beforehand. And he said to me, if there's anywhere in the world you would like to work, where would you go? And I kind of made a throwaway comment. Flippantly. Love, yeah, very flippantly to say, I'd love to work in you know, Australia. I loved Sydney. I'd been there on holiday, as many people have done, backpacking or traveling or various things. And I just loved the, loved the environment, clearly, loved the culture, uh, loved the weather. Uh, and just, you know. The food like, is and, good. And the food's brilliant. You know, really good food, fresh food, very yeah. vibrant, lots of selection. And I just made this very, say, flippant throwaway comment of going, I'd love to work in Sydney. And I didn't really think anything of it. But about a year later, um, as a, unbeknown to me, we were obviously buying the businesses in Sydney at the time. And I got a call to say, would you like, you know, remember that conversation we had? Do you still want to go to, to Australia? And I was like, yeah, great. You know, when? Thinking the answer would be <laughs> six months, six months yeah. time. And he said, oh, we're just about to complete a deal on, on these businesses. You know, you've got to go, but you've got to go in two weeks. So this yeah. was literally, uh, you know, early March. And we had two weeks to, to make a decision, get on the plane. Move your life. Move everything. And, and when I think you're in your early 30s, as it was at the time, or mid-30s, that's a much easier thing to do. Mm. You know, as the older you get, obviously, clearly, you know, relocation becomes more and more mm. difficult and more of a challenge. But we were completely up for it. We weren't worried about the time frame. And actually what happened, I, I'd been on a trip to, to Dallas. Uh, we were just opening at the time the Legoland Discovery Center in, in Grapevine. Um, and I'd been out to Dallas, came back, landed at Heathrow on, on, the, on the Friday morning, getting the, the overnight flight back and kind of knew I had to go home and have this conversation with Danny about moving. And I was really nervous about it. I didn't know what he was going to How gonna he was going to take it. I, didn't know, I honestly had no idea because I'd never really talked about it before. We'd mm -hmm. only been together 18 months, two years if that probably and I was you know really kind of, I'm not sure if he's going to want to go and got home and I probably on the way back I probably diverted through a bit of a long lunch and uh, <laughs> you know a couple of other confidence builders introduction yeah, let's confidence call it builders I'll leave them on on the way back before I got home and uh, said to him you know I got got back at I don't know five o'clock let's say um 
oh, you know, would you want to get want to move to Sydney, go to Australia? And he said, no. He said, no, I don't want to go. Uh, it's too hot. It's too far away. Um, it's too many sharks. Uh, you know, I don't like spiders. <laughs> That's a really good argument. All, 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 the, all the valid <laughs> reasons that a lot of people can come up with. Yeah. And I thought, oh, this is going to be difficult because I really want to go and how are we going to make it this? happen? And we kind of sat there for the evening, didn't really talk about it and watch TV and I probably went to bed early at eight o'clock, nine o'clock or something. And then he woke up the following morning and unbeknown to me, he must have been messaging or ringing some of his friends or, and whatever. And they'd all said, they must have all said, yeah, just go and do it. So we woke up in the morning at, again, whatever time. And he goes, oh no, well, let's just go. And he completely had gone from the space of the day before. All going, you needed going. to do was go to sleep. Just go to sleep. <laughs> Perhaps that's the whole point of show. Sometimes you just need to not step say away. anything, step away, yeah. let someone else work something out for Every Reflect. Reflect and then go from there. And literally, as I say, we woke up in the following morning and said, let's go. Wow. And two weeks later, we were on the on the flight going there. 14th of, 14th of March, 2011 is the day we left. You remember it? Yeah. Well, A, it's stamped still on my... On, my, on your on passport. My ex, well, my U, one of my old UK passports. But I've actually kept the boarding pass for the flight we were on. Do you do you keep stuff like that? Do no, you collect really. just that I don't, one? I, I, don't, I don't really keep things like that. I mean... I'm a bit of a hoarder <laughs> on keeping things that you don't really need. But that one specifically, I did keep as a as a memory part. It means something. Yeah, I think so, you know. that. So we've held, a, held on to that and brought it back with us, you know, literally when we got back, say, three weeks ago. So we got there, settled in pretty quickly. And, and funny enough, from the point I got to Sydney to the minute we left, I never felt homesick. You know, not That's one amazing. day of thinking. You I, felt at home. I felt very much at home. Felt very much at home. And, you know, my, my parents came over every year a couple of times. You know, some of my friends came over as well for, for a variety of things. We made a good group of friends there, um, you know, and set up our own life and set up our own, our own you know, house and apartment, as I say. Got the dog. So it did. It always felt. The dogs from, you got in Australia. Yeah. So the dogs have got Aussie barks. They've got Aussie accents, obviously. <laughs> so you, know, you can really tell. So you've imported the yeah, dogs back yeah. to the so, UK. So they, I love they, it. they came back with us and um that was probably actually one of the most stressful things about moving to bring I, the dog fine getting on the you know leaving and coming back because we've got our roots here and say really excited about getting into the into the new role but getting the dogs over was probably the most they have stressful to go thing quarantine. They, did, they don't have okay, to be, they don't good. have to do quarantine here good. all they had to do was they get picked up at um seven o'clock one morning uh flew back um overnight in doha uh, spent almost a day there. So it was about a 36-hour trip, but you could literally pick them up the morning of, which is fantastic. That's amazing. Yeah, it's really good. I, I think, to be honest, if they'd had to go into quarantine, quarantine it might have been an even more tougher decision. Yeah. Uh, but the fact they could do it and get back what was brilliant. So, so yeah. They're an integral part of your family, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, so. definitely. And I know it sounds silly sometimes, but when you haven't got kids... and you No, know, it doesn't got, sound silly. Got, They're a part of your family. They're very much part of us. And, yeah. you know, kind of, they go to school three days a week. I love it. Got, they are. They're like, they're, everyone says they're like the very spoiled dogs, but they are our kids, you know, to, Absolutely. to some extent. So, and then interestingly, actually, I mean, it's one of the things I really did, did talk about, even things like relocating. You know, we do see it from a very classic perspective within our business sometimes. Mm -hmm. You're relocating a family. Yeah. And I, and I did pick it up and, you know, the Again, the company was brilliant at saying, like, you know, how can we do things differently? Because there's different, you know, different forms of family, yeah. different ways of working, different yeah. ways of looking things. So I think it does. It, it helps shift that thinking within the business of how we treat everyone individually as well. So for me, that was really important as well from that, having that experience. Each family is unique and what was important to you might not be a priority for somebody else and vice versa. Yeah. So it's about adapting that. Yeah. So you left London 12 years ago. You're now back in London. Has London been home? Is this where yeah, you, you grew London, up? London's home. I mean, absolutely. I think, you know, in the 12 years of being in, in Sydney, you can tell by the accent, there's still very, very little, uh, well, zero Australian uh, accent. In it's it. not strong, Ozzy, for sure. No, it's not. Well, I think everyone's really disappointed <laughs> when they kind of said, I'll oh, speak to the, you know, speak to someone in Australia. And they got my South London accent on the end of the phone or over a Teams call wasn't quite as, uh, as appealing. But yeah, L London's home uh, very much. Um, it was actually... Um, uh, you know, we still owned a place in Battersea all the time. I mean, that is one of the great things about coming back here. Yeah. You get to enjoy all the things that London has to, to offer. offer. And, and I think the good thing is when we now we're back, that's just some of the things we didn't do before. I mean, mm -hmm. we went down to, uh, over the um, Easter weekend, went to Richmond Park. And it's beautiful. It's and stunning. I, I'd never spent 
three or four hours just going around how great it was and just exploring that. So when we're back, we're keen to find London again and re-energise yeah. ourselves with, with certain things because when you live here, you don't always do you that. You kind of take it for granted yeah, a bit. take things for granted. Yeah. I think it's the same with any city yeah. you live in. You do take it for granted. And again, from a work context, that's so important for us to be out exploring the cities we live in yeah. as tourists yeah. because that helps fresh create eyes. Great, great new ideas, fresh eyes. What can we do? What can we look at? What are our guests potentially doing? So having that context is really important as well. But yeah, it's great to be back. I want to ask you a question about mid ways yes how many do we have globally i was oh. trying to do my math in the train and i it's got it wrong question. i think <laughs> good, well i think we've got like 40 in the u.s alone or yeah, something don't, don't hold me to this but i think it's around about 130 at the moment it's crazy yeah don't quote me on that i should probably know the exact answer to that and fiona will probably say you well rob you should actually know the exact it's answer. okay we can find the yeah, exact it's, that's a it's, lot it's about it's about 130 so we're in obviously I think it's 22, 23 countries, all the way from Auckland, as far west as we go, to San Francisco. So we literally do cut. You know, Across cut the world. Every part of the world. And, and you're now responsible for... Well, well, I think that's a good... We are all responsible, I think. You know, one of the things I'm really keen to, to, to make sure really does come to life in the midway is that as a collective leadership team me, DDs, senior leadership teams, GMs and their teams, everyone's responsible for yeah. midway. So I think that's a really important thing as well. So ultimately, of course, you know, the the, um, the overall ownership and uh, accountability has somewhere, but it really is about the collective team that we're, we're, we're and building. And what they bring. Together and what everyone brings. Yes. And I think, again, to the point around individuality and yes. diversity and drawing strengths from our teams, there's no doubt we make the best decisions as a business when we're as close as possible to our guests. And that's the important part that everyone then brings to the Midway business and why we can learn so much from each other. Yeah. What is your favourite one to go and visit? Favourite? Do you have a favourite? Can you have a favourite child? I, I'm not sure. I mean... Do you have a favourite dog? <laughs> no, 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 I don't. I love them both equally. And very, they're very different. I say that about yeah, my boys. That's so, un that's so unfair of a question, isn't it? But uh, I should ask it the other way around. Do you? No, I don't. They're, I they're can't. Good, good. There is times where the eldest one is a, a grumpy teenager, so I love the baby more. Yeah. But only for like five minutes. Until until they until the eldest one is okay again. Yeah, until the other one's moved. Moved on and then, then yeah, yeah, because the baby's two and the teenager is nearly 11. Uh, okay, so there's different cuteness levels. Yeah. The 11 year old is embarrassed by me constantly. Yeah, yeah. the two year old thinks I'm amazing. Yeah, yeah, so I'm more drawn to the that. The two year old gets everything they want from you. Yeah, the 11, I'm, I am the, the center of his universe. Gets a few more nose, I'd imagine. Well, the 11 year old doesn't like nose anymore, so that's that's the kind of conflict point. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. What's your favorite uh, midway? Favorite midway, uh, yeah, like. I think I originally, um, you know, when I started in, in Merlin, this was 20 plus years ago, I was based at Mansfield London. Mm. And I remember going to Mansfield London as a, guest. As, as a guest when I was, you know, young, seven, eight, nine, ten year old boy and used to go a lot actually with my grandmother. Did she love uh, it? Who loved it as well. Um, you know, I used to spend um, a lot of Saturday afternoons or Saturdays with my with my grandma because actually my dad a, was a soccer coach, soccer manager. Uh, so he, he's managed a couple of teams in, in, in the UK. Um, and he was obviously, you know, out working on a, on a Saturday afternoon. And my mum would go off with the games to watch the games, etc. And I was a bit too young, really, to go or didn't yeah. want to go if they were going, uh, you know, on away games or whatever else. So um, we used to go, I used to spend time with my grandma. And uh, we used to spend a lot of time, you know, we literally, because she lived again in, in central London or just, uh, you know, just outside central London. We used to get the bus everywhere. And I was a bit obsessed by red buses, as a lot of, you know, kids are at that age. They just wanted, to get, a, they just wanted to get on a, a red bus to go somewhere. <laughs> And we would, um, you know, just say, okay, let's go somewhere and see where we end up. So anyway, we spent a lot of time going around London and exploring London and different parts of, of London. But we used to love going to Madden Two Swords. In fact, we probably would have been annual pass holders at the time if they existed. But I don't think Madden Two Swords did an annual pass at the time. Um, and and we'd, we'd go up there a lot. So when I first started at, at Madden Two Swords London, uh, or was based at Madden Two Swords London, it almost felt like going back. Dream job to the to to, to your what a you dream know what, job. Your, your family and and, and everything, uh, so that's probably my favourite attraction. And that's where you met your partner and as that's well. That's where I met my partner. So I think it is. It's that connection that we do as a as a company and as a business that plays such an important yeah. life, 
part of your life as well. And it's got that whole thing. And, you know, I know you hear a lot, you know, Merlin's like a big family, but I think that underpins it. A lot of people have had, you know, life changing moments yes. because of the company, be yeah. it personally or professionally. Yeah. And or, that's both. So, or both. Uh, and that's so important. But also, I did, you know, as a, as a child, I also loved playing with Lego, <laughs> as, as most boys and girls do. Um, <laughs> So I also, you know, I love that. So I also loved when I was uh, um, marketing director for the for the Lego Land Discovery Centres. So I'm quite, you know, passionate about th those brands as well. And then over a period of time, obviously the aquariums and sea life, you know, you, you see how brilliant they are. So yeah. I say I haven't got a favourite. I haven't. I, I love all of them, you know, very much. But I think Mansfield London is probably the one that stands out. I love it. I um, went out to your team current and previous ones and i have never received so many questions back on email for any of my uh, guests on this podcast i literally had 35 40 questions some are funnier than others yeah. do you want to start with like a light funny well, one or a more... the, let's start with the funny ones right and, and work out what, one that really jumped out and i was like actually that's a question i have how many shirts with crazy patterns do you have uh, What's the collection like? Well, I, I have quite a lot. Um, I'm a bit addictive to buying... Two digits, three digits? Uh, how, how many is quite... No, it's definitely not three digits. Okay. It's two digits. Okay. It's probably in the... I don't know. It's probably in the 20 to 30 okay. range. Okay. So Re reasonable, like reasonable Yeah. But I, but I have a tendency to wear the same ones quite frequently. Your favourites? I do have favourites on shirts. That's definitely. fine. Yeah, not on dogs, but definitely <laughs> on shirts. So, and obviously at the moment, everything's out of a suitcase. Because yeah. everything is somewhere, you live in this somewhere between Sydney and, and, and London on a, on, a, on, a, on a ship. So the minute my selection is a little bit limited. So today I went for the Flamingo. I love the Flamingo, the flamingo shirt. flamingo shirt just to get, get the Flamingo That's shirt. one of the faves? This is up there with the favourites, yeah. It's not normally a work one, but, uh, you know, you did Top say... Top five? This is in the top five, yeah. You you did say make sure you've got you know your favourite shirt on. So I followed the brief very clearly. <laughs> and no green whatsoever. No, no green, no green. <laughs> Apart from the eyes, but I was struggling to do anything around that. Well, we, we can't you we can't, can't remove that. that. It's we a charm factor. That. Come on. You can't change that. Um, and another person said you're an amazing cook, and you you cook a lot for. Well, that that depends if the person that said that I've actually cooked for. So uh, so I'm, so, look, I like to cook. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm an amazing cook, but I like to cook. I find it really relaxing. Is it like a meditation it for is. you? It's, I it's, find it's, that for me. It's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a relaxation, but I also love again the creativity of cooking. You know, I, I don't follow recipes. Me neither. I'm, I'm just like, I, I, you know, remember the program Ready, Steady, Cook? Oh, I love that program I'd where you're just to, given ingredients. I'd love to yeah. on that where you just got given five different things and said create something from that. And you have an hour or whatever they, yeah, they yeah, give absolutely. you, 30 minutes. Absolutely. So, so I find cooking relaxing, and but I find that element of creativity and, and coming up with different things. But I also, I mean, I love eating. Everyone loves, you know, good food. But I also love it when people love good food as well the and reaction absolutely i love cooking for people if you know they're going to enjoy it and they're going to enjoy the I company and chilling out and it's a social way of just getting to spending time together around good food good company nice place yeah so so cooking to me is the experience yeah just as much as the the end result of what you're going to eat i mean danny's danny doesn't like cooking at all he's not a great great cook um he's he's kind of a spirit. does he help with prep or no, do you not no, want no, interference he, 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 in the he, kitchen? No, he, I don't like to be interfered in the kitchen. I like, get out of the space. But he, he's, Leave me alone. He's developed a good spaghetti bolognese and a chili con carne, uh, but only because I think he then... Those are life staples. They're, they're good life dishes. Staples. I think he worked out that they're quite similar. You just have <laughs> he to can take, just differentiate just the, the chili beans and the chili out of one and put some perhaps mushrooms in the love other. Love it. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's just that experience that I love around it. Do you have a favourite dish? Um... One that either you love to eat or you love to cook. Oh, look, I love to eat a lot of things. And, and again, I think being in, being, being in Australia and then doing the APAC job, I learned a lot of different, you know, different flavors and a different experience. So I love going to, you know, Thailand is one of my favorite countries. Amazing it's cuisine. It's fantastic. The people are fantastic. The beaches are fantastic. The countryside is fantastic, but the food is amazing. So I, I like Go now. I've taken on quite a lot of spicy food and different variations of that. So I, I, I cook. I think quite a good curry, um, and I'd cook it from scratch. There's not no pre-made. No pre-made sauces in a jar. Unless I'm desperately sure. I'm, I'm impressed that you make I, like a Thai I'd, green from I'd, I'd scratch. Start from scratch. And, wow. And, and and do that. Um, again, I'm not sure the 
the team in Bangkok would necessarily say it was the best tight cut. It's okay, it's not a comparison. Yeah. Everybody has their own journey. Absolutely, absolutely. So I like that. Um, I think I made a pretty good lasagna, but again, I think that's a bit of a staple. Love doing a barbecue. What would Gardaland employees say about your lasagna? Know, probably the same as the team of back. I think it's not a lasagna. They'd be really judging it? They would, they would a bit be more, yeah. Well, someone told me once, and I, I cooked a lasagna, and there was a, when we lived in London before, there was a little Italian restaurant around the corner from us, and we got to know the owners quite well. And it was his birthday, and I think he was 60 or something. And he said to us, oh, um, I said, oh, why don't we do a birthday celebration for you? He goes, well, that'd be nice. Uh, and then he said, I've got a great idea. Why don't you take over the kitchen for the night? And he said this to me. And he said, we can have a little air out the back and you can cook. Oh, wow. Blah, blah, blah. So he let me take over his kitchen for the evening and I cooked a lasagna for about 20 people, I think it was. That's a big batch. It was a lot of lasagna. I mean, I was... <laughs> chopping a lot of onions um and the prep is crazy yeah it was madness but he told me about this and he said oh the part of italy i'm from you, they put eggs and hard-boiled eggs in the lasagna inside so, them like yeah. the layers is that i don't know if that's true or not i, I think know. it is in some parts of italy anyway i did it and it was everyone was like why have you done that and my cooking my judgment on cooking skills went down very rapidly oh. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's just to say it's it's that part about entertaining and yeah. being with other people that I do love. There's an element of sharing I find, and, and an element of like we're all here enjoying the same experience that we will always talk about it and always remember it. Um, I, I this question has also come through, but it's it's one that I want to ask as well. One of our three Bs this year is all about belonging. And I feel in the way you speak about Merlin and the journey that your career has had here and how you lead some amazing things in terms of the diversity and uh, inclusion agenda, but just in, in, in the way that you are you and, and, and you love being here and growing as a leader, I feel a real sense of belonging. That's what comes across. How, how does that land with you? What does belonging mean to you? Yeah, look, I, I, I completely... I, I've always thought that the people belonging part is the best thing about our business. You know, you, you have to have brilliant people. You have to have committed people. You have to be part of, a, as I say, a community or family. And that's the belonging part for me. It's about being, everyone having an opportunity, you know, individuality, equality, everyone being open to new ideas. And not to say everyone has to do everything. There's nothing wrong with saying, I just want to do this thing and that's mm. it and I don't want to grow or I don't want to develop but I'm comfortable with that and that's I want to be a specialist want to be a this. specialist there's yeah. nothing wrong with any of those things so I think that belonging and being part of a bigger bigger global business a bigger global family doing things that are right for individuals say for community for our guests for our creatures all of those things I love that that's why belonging is so important and, and unless you bring all that together we don't have a business is, is the honest answer and i know that's a relatively easy thing to say but it is it's putting people and putting our you know our, say, our guests our teams uh, our animals everything that brings that together at the heart of our business is so key for me and when we make decisions that all of that is is part of that decision making process no that's not to say and i say i'm always quite open about this when i talk to teams it doesn't mean that whatever we do will always be completely agreed with it won't please everyone all of the time you you have to have those difficult conversations there's people may have different views on different things on, on different ways of getting to the end result but once you've agreed that and once you've got it on board and once as a team you said this is the way we're going to do it you we have to deliver then and get on with it and yeah. say so you can't keep everyone happy all the time no. and look no one will ever claim we're working in a perfect world or a perfect environment we know that but do we do the best we possibly can do absolutely that's the priority and and as long as we feel that that we are doing the best every time yeah. i think that's that's enough yeah. um there was uh, a lot of questions about a song and movie one of the key ones back to the dinner uh, party and cooking point is if you could pick to have dinner with madonna Cher, kylie or gaga <laughs> oh, gosh i probably know who asked that question you know, by the way. <laughs> i'm but never gonna confirm madonna, nor deny madonna Cher, gaga or, or kylie. kylie who would be your number one top priority guest yeah, list? Okay, I, I think it would vary on, 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 on a number of things probably not madonna uh, i mean danny is a massive madonna fan so if we we're not going to share this podcast okay, with Danny then. No, no, no. <laughs> he, he won't listen to it for however long it is. He hasn't got the patience to listen to me at the best of times, let alone on a, on a podcast. Um, but um, 
Yeah, it wouldn't be Madonna. Danny's a big fan of Madonna, and he's seen her in concert about 40 times, so I'll leave Madonna to, to him. Um, Cher, Kylie, or Gaga? I think it would probably be Kylie. I have to say Is Kylie. that the Australia love I affair think, for the last just, 12 years? I think everyone loves Kylie, and there's also got to be a bit of edginess and naughtiness in there somewhere. She comes across as, you know, so perfect in everyone. And sweetheart, like you want to cuddle her. Ass, but there's got to be, there's got to be that, that A dark side. Yeah, there's got to be a dark side, <laughs> cheeky side, just waiting to get out. Kylie gets the invite. I think Kylie would get the invite. Yeah. The other three will have to wait. Well, the other, the other three would come next month. Yeah. <laughs> And probably Danny would invite Madonna yeah, to his own right. dinner party yeah, yeah, with a chili con I'd, I'd carne. Have to cook anyway, so that would be <laughs> he fine. would he would outsource that to you. Yeah. Um, will Fulham make top eight? No, is the answer <laughs> to that. So yes, this is the other thing. This is the thing I love about you know. It goes back to diversity. I can go from these conversations. Does this love of Fulham come from dad coaching well, football team? No, it actually comes again from well. Fulham is our family club, so it goes back to my great grandfather. Uh, so it's a big history fourth in the generation family. So my brother supports Fulham. My my ne um, two nephews support support Fulham. So Fulham's our family club. So even when Dad was a football manager, um, he wasn't. He, he worked at Fulham, but he was never a manager of Fulham. And at times he was he was a he was managing Crystal Palace actually, um, which is quite a big club in South London for those that don't know. Um, and he was manager of Crystal Palace and they were playing Fulham, and I was in the stand watching Fulham and wanting Fulham to win. Um, when And I think we actually won 2-0 against Dad, what was Dad's team at the time. So yeah, that's where the love of football comes from. Um, and it's, yeah, it's our family club. So brother, Dad and nephews go every other week, they've got season tickets. Um, I'll probably get one next year, um, depending on where that gets to, but no, they won't make the top eight. I think they even, even with dreaming bigger and no, no, let's worry about that next year. I think. <laughs> we'll go for that one next year. Uh, somebody told me that you love doing business reviews with the attractions, even if they take a whole week out of your diary. I love business reviews. What do you love about uh, them? I think it's about being connected with the business as well. I think, you know, the, it is. It's a lot of time mm. and you have to stay focused mm -hmm. for a lot of time, a whole week. But it's about discussing challenges for the teams. It's not about reviewing the business. It's not about what happened in the past. It's about looking forward. I love that. And how we can grow, what support the teams need, what we could do better. And also, for me, what I can share with other teams that comes out of a business review. Because there might be a brilliant idea on one site. That you can transfer. That you can transfer over. So just that whole process of business reviews, for me, is about sharing, learning, developing, supporting, and growing. Even the actually the word review is needs to, needs to change. Let's change it. We we'll change that. Let's let's, let's start a petition. Start, we don't need to start a petition. We can just do it. You know, we can just do it. And, and we'll call and, it the learning journey. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. It is. It's a journey. It's a. It work. is. It's about because you learn, they learn. Well, right? I think it comes back into the dreaming bigger part. You know, it is. It's about the three pillars of dream big, operate brilliantly, and belonging. And they're the things to bring out of the, 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 of the, reviews, the discussions. So we're not calling them reviews. We're not calling them We need to change. We need to have a think any about Any ideas from anyone on what we can call yeah. them, send them in. But I think they're great. And, and also for me, it's something I want the teams to really buy into as well. Because again, it, it's not about a review of what's gone wrong. It's what we should celebrate and grow and moving forward. I don't think anybody will see business reviews the same way again after listening I to this podcast. Not. I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> or call them a review anymore. <laughs> um, we are in one of those really fast-paced organizations where we acquire businesses, we grow, we've grown so much over the last few years, and we have a brand new CEO with an, an amazing vision for the company. Um, in his book, he talks a lot about be where your feet are. And then we had this kind of school of thought of work-life balance. Which one do, do you connect more with? Is it more about a balance constantly or is it about, I'm here now, I'll give my 100% to work. And when I'm at home with Danny and the dogs, I'll give my 100% there. Or is it more of a fluid, more balanced thing for you? I think it's you? a fluid, more balanced thing. I mean, over a period of time, I, I've learned to, you know, again, you have late night calls, you'll have early morning calls. You shouldn't be able then to say, right, you know, just because you have an early morning call, you finish earlier or you or you adapt around that. 
and you, you you have to have that balance. You know, there's nothing wrong with again. I think it goes back to what we were talking about earlier on about having space and mm -hmm. time to think. That to me is part of a work life balance as well. Just going out and perhaps I say going to the theatre or doing going to a museum or doing some culture or, or sharing ideas with friends over dinner. All those things help give you ideas that come into the workplace as well. Because I think again the brilliant thing about our company is. Everyone does it. Everyone goes on holiday. Everyone goes to city centre breaks. Everyone goes to attractions or theme parks. There's or, research going so on every day. It's live. Yeah. It's out there. So doing all those things that lie into work-life balance as well. Not because mean you're working, but you're just getting experience. You're getting exposure. You're seeing other things that are going on rather than just doing what can be quite a blinkered view of thinking we do everything perfectly. Well, what, who else out there is that we can learn from and, and steal from and, and share ideas? Be inspired by. Yeah, absolutely. Be inspired by, yeah, 100%. So I think that work-life balance is very fluid. It moves all the time. Yeah. And you learn to adapt your life and your work around what works for you. And again, that's not the same for everyone. So there's no right and wrong way of doing these things. It's, it's individual. When I was telling people that I've invited you to the podcast and you've accepted and all of that, they said, you must ask him how he's achieved this amazing sense of pride celebrating in Australia and how it's seen as the absolute amazing example of this is how you celebrate diversity and inclusion. Everybody said that. There wasn't a single person that didn't mention it. Um, how have you done it? What can you teach the rest of us that are are still not learning? But I think we still are learning about diversity and inclusion and you'll never know everything. But you've done something amazing in Australia that people call it out as this is an amazing example of celebrating difference. I think it's the team again. You know, it's not it's a collective all group of, you of people together. that all really have a clear framework, agenda. It's and it's relevant. You know, mm. It's not about doing something, and whatever it is, be it pride or you know any area of diversity, mm. gender, race, it, it's it's about being passionate about it. And there's lots of those topics out there that people can unite behind. And I think the brilliant thing about what we're doing about DNI now is having task forces in place, I love that. having country representation, because it's coming up from the teams of what they believe is important. Because it's very easy to say, let's focus on X, Y, and Z. But unless the teams really believe in it and passionate and passionate about it, that's what drives it forward. And then if you've got a, a leader or figurehead or key stakeholders, whatever you want to term it as, that are behind it and supportive and engaged across that, that becomes very powerful. Um, and look, I think we're really proud of some of the things that we've done. Um, you know, there's a number of the team that are, have done some fantastic work, brilliant, brilliant work. And I think it is leading the way. It really and, is. And in fact, I've asked, you know, um, some of the team have shared that with some of the work that's just happened for World Pride in the past uh, past month with all of our other, you know, businesses as well. And it's been shared across the APAC or the, the, the Global DNI Steering Committee because there's learnings there that every site can be doing. And particularly where you've got big Pride events or big DNI and I, you know, events yeah. in general that we can all join up behind. And it, again, it means different things for so many different people. It's it's an evolution of where certain countries are at, yes. certain markets are at. So there's no one size fixed fixed all. It's a different path it's for everybody. Isn't that it? again is the point of diversity, isn't it? Yeah. You know, having that. So I, I'm really really proud as well, actually, of of some of the conversations that are now happening, particularly with the teams in Asia. You know, it's been a brilliant journey. And the fact that some of these conversations are now coming up in, in Asia and the teams have, again, representation on the task force, there's there's country um, employee network groups feeding into it, that's changing the conversations. And things that were taboo subjects 18 months, two years, three years ago, we're now talking about within our teams. I love that. And that will change other people's ways of viewing it. So if we can educate and we can learn and we can raise a conversation that creates awareness and all of these topics around awareness. And I think that helps. And then the conversations become different. Absolutely. We, 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 we move the conversation on because people want to learn, want to understand more, and go away and do their own knowledge and question perhaps some of their pre, you know, biased prejudices. And it opens That we up. all have. Of course we do. Absolutely. So you've caused something to happen. And that's a great leadership characteristic. Great leaders cause things to happen. So what would you like your leaders, your leadership team, to cause to happen this year? I think there's, I think it's about 
about um, it's it's about change. I think it is. It's about driving change. I think going back to being around belonging and having that on our agenda and really driving that, driving how we work, driving how we you know work with other people driving how we work with other suppliers partners all those things that we can bring bring together the power of the collective is so much greater than you know a, a, an individual so how do we really drive that as change and bring that together that's probably for me the, the biggest thing i'd like to see move forward partnerships yeah yeah and um, speaking of partnerships, I think we need to find a way to um, incorporate Ready Steady Cook into the Midway attraction <laughs> somehow. Yeah. Some yeah. sort of experience. Yeah. Something that I can see you leading in one of those well, PR moments, a cook experience, something. It has to be. I think experiential F&B is, is really powerful. Uh -huh. you know, there's some really good things out Where there. Where the guests can be. The guests are being in, involved. And it's, it's, it's like, you know, there's a lot of obviously F&B uh, cabaret or shows or, or yeah, those experiences. Yeah, it's especially not, in London. Yeah, especially in London. I, but it's not just that. I think it's broadening it so you become part of it and part of the experience. And and we were talking the other day, There was a, I was looking at, you know, what's the future of observation um, and observation towers and, and you know, wheels, etc. Because you know, obviously we've, we've got London Eye, Blackpool Tower, Sydney Tower mm -hmm. Eye, but there's a lot of other towers out there and a lot of towers are very reliant on F&B as part of their offering. But they're all very you know, standard F&B offerings, but how do you make observation and experience an F&B connected? So it could be you're traveling around the world or you're going to different parts and there's pop-up stalls and how do you bring all that to life so the guest really feels like they're getting an observation experience? I love that. I would pay a ticket for that. F&B and you're getting all those different varieties. It goes back to what are the, you know, what are the, all the senses? Taste is one of them. 100%. So how do you bring that in? So interactive and immersive is taste as well as part of that. I love, I, I mean, if if that doesn't become a thing, a business thing by the end of the year after this podcast. Let's work on it. I, I think we need a business case for that. Um, what are you going to miss most about Australia? Uh, the, the the team there, the team, the team's amazing. Um, you know, there's some of the team, you know, I've grown really close to and, and, and absolutely, you know, so certainly the people, you know, no doubt about it. Um, I'll have to say, you know, that there's a, that my, my, my PA in, in in australia ash is amazing um like you know it, it, she's um you know when it comes to driving things like merlin magic one diversity you know i know we shouldn't name names on podcasts but absolutely you know ash is she's a real way. merlin she's, person she's absolutely leading the way out yeah there. so look I, I miss her you know hugely um but i i think i'll just I'll, I'll miss I'll probably miss my weekends to be perfectly honest of <laughs> of going to the beach and uh, you know some of some of some of that time but as I say you can offset that everywhere and and, yeah. and life is an experience and life is a journey so you have to take all these things in your stride and, and then go from there and what is the first theatre show that you're going to watch in London with Danny I don't know. We were, we were actually talking about this the other day of, of what's out there because there's so many shows. There is a lot. There's a lot of shows out there, and, and you know I'm, we're quite into musicals, so we do like you know we do like going to mm. a musical. And there wasn't that many in Sydney, um, so I think there's a few on the radar that we've got to go and, and check back out. Um, actually, I think I don't know if the Whitney one's still on, but we want to go and see the Whitney one. At oh, one nice. We both. Oh, we're I should both, put Whitney yeah, on the yeah, dinner list. <laughs> yeah, that might have been difficult, <laughs> I guess, but. Um, um, Look, she was amazing. I actually watched the film on the way back. Home. I watched I the have, film. And I'm a crier. I'm a real big crier on, on films. Um, and I thought I'd been through the whole wave of emotion of crying moving over here. I then got on the plane and pretty much cried nonstop watching every film. That Whitney film was, yeah, yeah especially the ending. Yeah. No, we're not going to spoil it for people, but you yeah. know the story. Yeah. So um, that's one. Uh, but we'll see what else is out there. So, yeah, the plan is to hit. I want to see the Abba Voyage. Uh, that is amazing at the O2 have you, have you seen it? I want to book tickets for that but there was somebody I think it was Jeremy Vine from BBC2 that went to watch it and said I don't know how they do it but it's like they're back in the 80s and they're 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 young selves so they haven't aged on the on the holograph at all so it's something i really want to do it's at yeah. the o2 yeah it looks amazing perhaps we need to book that in as a uh as Can a, we do uh, like a midway day out familiarization <laughs> with midway team when we get it in and i recommend a musical called and juliet 
So it's Romeo and Juliet oh, done I, differently. I've heard of that one, yeah. You will laugh and sing the whole way through. It's just phenomenal. Great, okay, good. So take Danny we'll to, to that, he'll love it. then of what I need to go and see. <laughs> I've seen pretty much all the musicals and I'm married to somebody that doesn't understand musicals. Well, he does, but he doesn't because he's a civil engineer. Right, okay. So it's like, why do they break into song every five minutes? Yeah, the clue's in the name, I, <laughs> guess, <isn't> it? <laughs> I said that to him. <laughs> but hey, he's, he's kind of there now he's sort of okay with it he's more of a documentary right. person okay yeah, i'd much rather go and see a musical over a documentary that's for sure and what's the most exciting thing about 2023 apart from a house move a life move relocating to london being closer to family you've got so much going on there's, there's a load going on but i but i think it is it's 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 the energy i think there's so much energy at the moment and there so is. much buzz and so much excitement and I think that's the thing. I think that moves people, doesn't it? it that yeah. We we all need that. That's you know? our fuel. Absolutely. It, it it does. It keeps people going. It, it picks everyone up. You know, yes, there'll be tough parts along the way, but I think that energy and we're growing and it's, it's exciting. I think all of that just is absolutely the, the big thing. So I think overall there's, there's so much change, but change is good. Change is something we should all strive for you know what do you do and how do you adapt to that mm -hmm. and how do you learn to control your emotions and your strengths and still remain consistent and perform so i think yeah change overall but i think the excitement is 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 really something to be looking forward to yeah and the future of this awesome business yeah thank you you're welcome for being here for being yourself for answering the questions i've got so many more yeah i'd like around to we, well i'm going to give them I to you did five so I wonder what yeah yeah 30. what's your favorite song and movie of all time oh i really struggle on this one. <laughs> I really, that's I, why i didn't I, ask I, it funny enough this came up we were, we were we went out for dinner the other day and i kept on going about movies and i couldn't think of any and then when you get into it you go oh yeah i've seen that i've seen that but i'm, I'm not good at remembering casablanca for me Re casablanca love casablanca really? yeah a classic so i'm not even sure i've ever sat song like any abba song hence i'm coming to voyage oh, with you right, okay <laughs> right so what abba songs were in casablanca no no, I was gonna no say, casablanca yeah. is like a classic black and white movie yeah, from cool. i think the 60s so where did the abba part come from i just love abba oh, okay. i'm a huge i love eurovision oh. if we can get tickets to eurovision please let me so, know so, so danny <laughs> applied for eurovision because Australia was in Eurovision. That's right. So Which he, is like when we tell people, they're like, "Why is Australia in Eurovision?" But on, they are. He was on the. He was on the show, not all that, not live, but he had a clip performance of about thirty seconds. I need to meet Eurovision Danny. Australia. Can we make oh, it yeah. happen? Of course. Can we there, please yeah. like somehow get some Merlin sponsorship for yeah. Eurovision? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's where Abba comes from, from yeah. Eurovision and Waterloo and Super Trooper and yeah, all of yeah. that. Yeah. The entire back catalogue. So you see, obviously, all the Mamma Mia. You Everything. Seen, seen it fifty. Oh, times sorry. it's filmed in greece i have yeah. a bigger connection to it yeah but yeah casablanca check it out check if it you out. love a cry on a movie oh i can't <laughs> cry anymore i ask everybody on the podcast uh if we could wave a magic wand who would you want to see on that chair invited next time who would i like to see on the chair invited next time that is a good question that is a good question. Actually, I'd love to see some of perhaps, you know, again, the, the duty managers, the 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 up and coming. Huel said that. Man, yeah. that. Oh, did Huel say yeah. that as well? Okay, yeah. Who's out there that, you know, doesn't want to hear from, you know, where's the aspiration? Where do the, those teams? So perhaps yeah. let's ask around. Perhaps, you know, we've got supervisors, a great managers, people team manager. leaders, people that are managing our future generation and will be our future leaders. Perhaps, perhaps one of the team there. Oh, on the list. It's happening. Thank you so much. No worries. You're welcome. Welcome back to London. Thank you very it's much. It's going to be awesome. Be Thank you. <laughs>